let's take a look at item properties. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right. We find ourselves back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at item properties. Those are actually very, very interesting and they can be used to basically in highest level overview, change the texture of, a, of an item depending on all sorts of different things, be it on the biome that you're in, be it on something on the stack, like, for example, some data components, you know, think about that one. That's going to be very interesting. But what we are going to basically do is we have the chisel item right here. And what we're going to do is when you've used this once, then what I simply want to do is I simply want to change the texture to something a little bit different. Basically, just lighten up the texture a little bit. It's not as exciting or let's say as applicable of an example here in this case that you're going to be able to, well, easily use, let's say, in a mod. However, this is just for demonstration purposes in this case. And you'll find that it's actually fairly straightforward, all things considered. So what we're going to have is we're going to have, first and foremost, in the util package, a new Java class, and that's going to be the mod item properties class. Now, you can also put this in a different package, right? A client package or something like that. But, you know, I personally put this in the util package. That's going to be fine. It would also be working in the item package, but, you know, that's splitting hairs over here. And what we're going to have is we're going to have a public static void add custom item properties method. And what this is going to do is as follows. It's going to call the item properties class dot register method passing an item. So this is going to be the item that we want to add an item property to. It's going to be the chisel.get in this case. We're going to then make a resource location from namespace and path. This is the name for our, for our property, basically. In this case, we're going to call this used. And then the last parameter, the third parameter, we can start typing in stack over here. And you can see that it suggests to us an item property function. So you're just going to hit the tab to autocomplete it. And then here, what we actually want is we want to return and a floating point number. And we can, of course, you know, just return like 1F. But obviously now we run into the issue that, well, now it's always going to return 1F. So that's not really what we want. We, of course, want to change the value of this use property depending on something. And in this case, we want to say stack.get and we're going to get mod data components dot exactly. We're going to get the coordinates components. We're going to say if that is unequal to null, then it's going to be one and if it is null so there's no data component on it then we're going to return a zero effectively making it so that when we once again look into the chisel item over here we change the data component right or add something to the data component when we right click on a particular block right so that is when this turns true effectively switching from a zero in the normal state to a one when we have right clicked a proper block with the chisel very interesting indeed. Like I said, you also have access to the level. You have access to the entity that is holding this particular item. So there's all sorts of different things that you could do. You could check for the health of the entity and then change the the this particular property depending on it. You could change the, but depending on where in the level you are, like there's so many different cool things that you could do here. I, I genuinely, like I've, I'm impressed that I haven't seen that many different things like done with this before. I, I like a couple of mods do this, but not a lot of them. Now, one limitation that comes with this is that we basically need a item model JSON file that, that we make ourselves. This is simply due to the fact that we can't really represent this in the data gen. So in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the data gen and we're simply going to comment out the basic item right here. And we'll also go to our generated folder and actually delete that particular item model JSON file, because if you keep it here, it can actually lead to some issues. Now, what we're actually going to do is I'm actually going to not delete it, but just, just drag this over here, first of all, into the tutorial mod folder for just a moment over here. And then we're going to create the proper directory structure. So in assets tutorial mod, we're going to right click new directory called models. And inside of there, another new directory called item. And we're going to add the chisel JSON file into there. And we're actually going to change this up and we're going to rename a couple of things. This is now going to be called chisel underscore used. And we're going to also change the name of this. So click on this, press shift F6. And we're going to change the name to chisel underscore used. There we go. We're then going to drag it into the same folder while holding control. And this will then be called chisel.json. And now we need to change the chisel.json. In the normal case, we simply want to, well, do the same thing that we've done before. However, now we want to add another thing. And that is we want to add an overrides over here. 
This is an override and that is a list as you can see. And that list contains some objects and the objects contain a predicate. There you go, predicate. And that is of tutorial mod colon used. Aha. Uh -huh. okay, have we seen this before? Absolutely. And if that is one, then what do we want to do? We want to then point to a different model. And that model is tutorial mod colon item slash chisel underscore use. So really, this should be basically immediately understandable. If you're like, I'm not quite sure what the frick is happening. Well, let's think about this once again. We have a chisel item in our hand. As normal, it simply uses the chisel item texture right here. This one. Easy enough. Everyone should understand that. That is nothing crazy. However, now we also have an override. And we're saying, hey, if the used item property is one, then I don't want you to use this texture. I actually want you to use this item model JSON file that crazily enough is right here, chisel underscore used, which obviously then means if we use this item model JSON file instead of the normal one, we then appoint to the chisel underscore use texture, which I'm going to copy over, which is also available to you as well, by the way. And now, to be fair, this is literally the like easiest thing ever. It is just a little bit brighter. Just so that we have any type of difference over here in the texture, like I said, it's not really the best uh, example, let's say, that is easily applicable to a mod, but hopefully it's going to spark some ideas here in you. And yeah, that is the idea. So now it points to a different texture and that is the whole shebang. That's basically the whole idea. And that's literally all we need to do here in this case. The item model properties, they are used for the bow. They're used for the clock and things like that. So they're used quite extensively. I highly recommend you go into the item properties class. So simply control left click on this. And you can see my leave a little bit further down. There's the crossbow, right? We got the fishing roll, elytra. So there's quite a few of them that use this. And basically with that, change the texture depending on certain things. Highly recommended to try this out. It is super freaking cool. The last step that we want to do is we want to go to our tutorial mod class and we want to go to the on client setup event and we want to say mod item properties dot add custom item properties. With this done, we now have everything we're going to need. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, finally back in Minecraft once more and we can see that we have some chisels. And if I were to right click on a block that I can chisel, you can see the texture has now changed. And it's like it's, it is subtle, but you can definitely see that these are two different textures. And if I were to take another one of the chisels and I would once again chisel something, you can see it now also changed its texture. Absolutely freaking amazing. Like I said, it is a very subtle effect, but it is pretty cool. And I'm sure you can come up with something really cool using item properties. Awesome. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll continue to use item properties by adding a custom bow. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.